Okay, so we've got this hit react montage for the character, and we're ready to actually implement this in our character class. So let's go back to shootercharacter.h, and we're gonna go down to the private section and add another anim montage variable. So this is gonna be u anim montage, that's a pointer, and we're gonna call this hit react montage. Now we're gonna need to make this edit anywhere, blueprint read write, category combat, so I can just copy the U property from blood particles and paste it there. And I'm gonna give this a comment and say, hit react anim montage for when character is stunned. Now I'd like to create a function for when the character gets stunned. And this is gonna be a public function, so we can call this from the enemy class when the enemy hits the character. So let's go into our public section at the very bottom and create a void function called stun. Now we can give this function a function body here. And in stun, what we wanna do is set the combat state to stunned. So we're gonna say combat state equals e combat state ECS stunned. And we want to play the hit react animation montage. So we're going to first get our anim instance by saying u anim instance anim instance equals get mesh get anim instance. Now if anim instance and our hit react montage, then we can call anim instance montage play which will take the anim montage which will be hit react montage and the rest of the inputs have default values so I'm going to leave them as they are. Now we only have a single montage section so we don't really need to call a montage jump to section but in the future if we add more montage sections to this montage, then we might want to think about coming in here and jumping to a particular section depending on the circumstances. For example, you might want to play a different hit react animation depending on where the enemy hits the character. But for now, we're just going to play the montage as is because it has a single section. Now, it would be sort of unfair if the character gets stunned every time the enemy hits the character. So, we might want to have a stun chance for the character as well. So let's create a stun chance variable here in shooter character.h. I'm going to create a float called stun chance. And I'm going to give this edit anywhere blueprint read write category combat and the same meta specifier we've been using. And I'll give this a comment that says chance of being stunned when hit by an enemy. And I'm gonna give this a default value in the shooter character constructor. So let's set this to about 0.25F, about a one in four chance of being stunned. Now we have a stun chance, and this is a private variable. So we need a public getter for this so the enemy can access that. So let's create a public getter down here at the bottom under our stun function. So this will be force inline, it's going to return a float and it will be get stun chance. It'll be const and it will return stun chance. Now we have a public getter for this. Now we can call this from our enemy class. Here we have our enemies on left weapon overlap and we can create a function to call in this that will attempt to stun the character. So let's create a function here in enemy.h in the protected section, and this will be a void function, and we're gonna call this stun character. And we're gonna add an input parameter of type a shooter character. And I'm gonna call this victim. Now, it's really an attempt to stun the character, but if we called this function attempt to stun character, it'd be kinda long, so I'd rather just call it stun character and add a comment that says attempt to stun character. Let's go ahead and create a function body for this. Okay, and 
In our stun character function, we'll first check to see if victim is valid. And if it is, then we need to calculate whether or not we're stunning the character. So we can get a random number between 0 and 1 and check to see if that number is within our character's stun chance. So we're going to make a const float called stun and initialize it using fmath frandrange and we'll get a random number between 0.f and 1.f. Now we need to check to see if this random value is less than or equal to the character's stun chance. So we're going to say if stun is less than or equal to victim get stun chance. If so, then we can stun the character. So we can say victim stun. So now we have this stun character function and we can call this in on left weapon overlap here inside the if character check. And we can pass in character. Now we're going to call this in on right weapon overlap as well, right here just under spawn blood. So now when we hit the character, we're calling stun character. And then we're going to see if a random value between 0 and 1 falls below or equal to the character's stun chance. And if so, then we will call the character's stun function. And the stun function will set the combat state to stunned and play the animation montage, hit react montage. So let's compile this. All right, so we've compiled. Now we also need to set that montage variable. So we're going to search for hit react and set this to hit react montage. So now we have our hit react montage set. And the last thing we need is to go into the hit react montage and we need to select a slot for this. What I'd like to do is go to our anim slot manager, click add slot. And for this, I'm going to add hit react. So we now have a hit react slot and we're going to assign that here for slot name. We're going to choose hit react. So save that. And lastly, we'll go into shooter anim BP, go into the anim graph and all the way down here at the bottom, just before output pose, we're going to create another slot node and run this through the slot node. And for the slot, we're going to select hit react. Now let's go ahead, compile and save this. So now we can play test it. So I'm going to hit play and see if the enemy will hit us. And there it goes. It's a hit react animation being played. And that looks great. Okay, that's going to conclude this video. We now have a stunned state for the character. And you can take this any direction you want. You can add other effects while the character is stunned. You can show a widget when the character is stunned. There's any number of things you can do. So that is going to conclude our stun mechanic. I'll see you in the next video.